My name is Joseph Morrison. I'm a bagpiper from Birmingham, Alabama, and this is my teacher, Douglas Murray. And so what brought you first to the pipes? How did you get started on the pipes? Well, it started a, a lot of years ago now. Um, so I must have been about six or seven years old. Um, and my father was, was a keen uh, uh, piper although at quite a very sort of basic level um, and yeah. sort of self-taught and uh, he loved all things to do with bagpipes he was a, a, a real enthusiast of the scottish instrument and uh, he did he wanted... did he play did he get started in a band yeah he played played with a local band here in fife uh, uh see it was uh, just a little village band it wasn't a competing band it was a little band called Cirrus. Um, um, so he was he was kind of doing that, and he had a few friends that played bagpipes as well. So when okay. uh, when, we, when we came along, it was like right, I'm going to get these boys, me and my brother Jim, on the bagpipes. Uh, so we started <laughs> off. He he, he was uh, right right on the basics, you know, really good with exercises and scales and all that kind of stuff. Um, and really just the discipline of practicing daily um, to, to form habits and, and to, to listen to recordings. And at that time, it was just, we didn't have uh, internet or CDs or anything yeah. like that. It was, all, it was just records. We, we had records. Right. Vinyls. <laughs> we call them vinyls now. Eh? Um, so what, my, my mom and dad had an old record player in their bedroom. And so after, you know, or during we're on the practice, if I was under practice, I used to go through and put on, uh, I think we had a record um, of Donald McLeod, um, which we, uh, I used to listen to and try and- Yeah, not too shabby. <laughs> play, play bits, you know, try and, and then also had a record of um, uh, the 1980 Pipe Band Championships. And right. so my goal was always to try and play along with these great bands at that time. Uh, right. Um, so yeah, I would be, you know, I'd be sort of maybe about 10 years old at that time. So yeah, okay. in the early years, you know, my dad was just kind of getting us in the basics, getting us practice and lent us a few tunes. Right. And then he okay. took us to the So was your, was your dad a P-Rock player? No, but I love Pebro. Um, okay. He used to he used to take us up to Glen Fiddich every year, every year. Okay. And I just have faint memories of being at Glen Fiddich, very very young. Wow. And uh, you know, all there all day. It was a, a treat. So you get your lunch out. You know, that was a treat for us. Uh, yeah. And I always remember just looking out the windows, and it was daylight. And then the next time I'd look. It was night time and it was still going on. And the, the, room, the room was just full of people, you know, the big hall at Glen Yeah. And uh, you, you waited right then to get the prize list, you know, to see who had won. And, uh, and then he would, he would catch it when it was on the radio. And, uh, yeah. And, you know, the following weeks, it was on a, usually on a Saturday night. So that was, that was yeah. the only, you know, just kind of get going. Um, and then he, then he, he said, right, I need to take you to a teacher now. Um, so the, uh, the first teacher I had really in solo piping, uh, although I played in bands and um, a couple of local bands, uh, was the first solo teacher was a guy called Bert Barron. Uh, he was, uh, he stayed just along in St. Andrews in Fife. Um, right. And he was super, super good at the the basics again, muscle memory, yeah. getting the work, the work and the finger work really, really clean and strong, you know. Um, yeah, that was the key thing. And then he was getting us into people. They started getting into people. He was like, and I was like, what is this people stuff, you know? And then, as I say, you start to kind of get out of competitions as we were growing up. So that was my first sort of introduction into piping, and it was all very, you know what's this all about you know at that time yeah um, until i started competing my dad says right you need to start playing in these competitions so it could be the under 13 okay. competition, the under 
Oh wow! Okay, yeah. I was under twelve chanter competition, you know, before I, before I went on the fight. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and I got quite nervous when I was competing in these competitions. Um, right. And I started to get a bit annoyed, you know, in these competitions because I was going to play in, and I'd make a mistake or do something crazy wrong, you know. And yeah. I never got a prize. And I was like, well, why, why, why did that guy beat me? So I used to start to get, I got annoyed with myself. And and, I, and so, someone said to me, maybe my dad had said to me, he says, you know, uh, there's no point in getting annoyed about it. You'll just need to practice more. And that was the, yeah. that was, that was the spark because I was fed right. up getting, getting beaten by all these other kids. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, so then I was like, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not getting beaten again. I'm gonna go practice. So, and it's amazing how that started to pay off uh, within a few months, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And then you, at one point, won double gold medal. <laughs> yeah, and I could have progressed on a couple of gold medals. So uh, yeah. So you've done, you done all right. I did all right, you know, my dad done the right thing, keeping us practicing. But, you know, I suppose, you know, instilling that habit of practice at that young age, it wasn't a problem for the rest of your life to practice because you had, it was just what, part of your life, it's just what you've done. Um, yeah. It was very common, you know, that, you know, in those early years, we, I would go and do an hour every night. And it used to be, you know, right, go through your exercises first, get the fingers going. Right. Um, go through some of your tunes on the practice chanter, then get the pipes out and um Yeah. And try and blast out a few tunes in, in the bedroom. And right, then, yeah. And in, in those days, you know, we we didn't have a lot of stuff, you know, we didn't have a lot of reads or, or uh, you know, equipment. So quite often right. we were getting getting older stuff and I, I remember you know shaving cane drone reeds to try and get them to vibrate properly and trying to retie bridles and it was kind of yeah. like a we were kind of self-educating ourselves you know that that didn't work that time that worked you know so it was you know soon developed, you soon developed uh, the skills uh don't do that to your read again or, or you know or that works <laughs> So it was, uh, it was yeah. quite, a, quite an education. I, I guess. Well, that I mean, that probably paid it. That probably paid off, you know, big time when you when you basically it was your brother's read business, yeah. Yeah. So back in uh, Jim, Jim, my brother, he moved out to Australia in twenty twelve. Yeah. It was twenty twelve. Um, so before going away, he was obviously wanting to take his little stuff over. Australia as possible, you know, travel as light as he could with yeah. his family. So um, he says, yeah, you want to buy the business. So at that time, Jim had a few orders on and some basic equipment. Uh, I says, yeah. So I kind of started from, from then. Um, but I had been helping right. him a couple of years before that with making reads and stuff. So yeah, for about 2010, I was kind of dabbling making reads. And, uh, okay. But I, was, I was always curious of the how the reeds went together and what changed the sound of a reed. Right. Um, you know, if if a reed was was thicker cane on, on that part of the reed, how did that affect the sound? How did that affect the strength or, you know, how right. make it easier for me to play, you know? Sure, so of I, course. I always had that from a young age. I was always curious uh, the, the how, how, how do you get your sound better, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, for those who don't know, Donald McPherson was your teacher for nearly 20 years. I know he fiddled with his reeds, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Donald, Donald made, made a few reeds and, uh, I, th I think, yeah, he, he kind of developed skills to, to be able to make his reeds and, and, and shape them to suit what he wanted and suit his channel. Um, did, did any of that, did you get any of that technique from him or did, was he? forthcoming um, with any of that yeah well you did you, you know he used to tell you you could you could you could uh he used to say you could rub the reed with a bit of paper he called the paper but he meant sandpaper 
Okay. Uh, yeah, to to uh, this part and this will this will do that. So he gave you a few wee tips, you know, but it was right. very much, you know, um, don't, don't do it too much. You know, he used to say, don't sure, don't, don't ruin the read. <laughs> it was very yeah. conscious of cost. And Absolutely. Stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, he did. He did uh, kind of give us give us a few tips along the road, but a lot of the stuff, a lot of the stuff that I learned was pretty much through self discovery, you know, and. Um, yeah. And plus, a, a huge part of it was when I played with uh, Blingery School Pipe Band and guys under Donald uh, under Bob Shepherd. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bob, uh, Bob Shepherd was obviously the you know the shepherds from Cardden and they were like one of the right. biggest read makers in the world, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I used to watch Bob closely how he worked how he worked his reads, you know, and he worked the reads in the band yeah. and. Um, he really did have a, a class technique, you know. Um, yeah. So that was an education as well. So I was really very, very fortunate. I was in this mix with different, all sorts of different people that were doing different things, and uh, you know, it was just a, a a bed of knowledge, just the way waiting to be soaked up, you know. Sure. Yeah. Well. Awesome. Well, thanks. I think that'll. I think that's a great start. So, yeah. uh, awesome. Well, thank you. Thank. Thanks for the lesson. And yeah. uh, and uh, we will we will get back to it. We'll get to it again next week.